Book of Genesis chapter six, chapter seven, sorry. Book of Genesis chapter seven. Then the Lord said to Noah, go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens also, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of waters came upon the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Of clean animals and of animals that are not clean, and of birds, and of everything that creeps on the ground, two and two, male and female, went, to the, went into the ark with Noah, as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days the waters of the flood came upon the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day all of the fountains, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day Noah and his sons Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them entered the ark. They and every beast according to its kind, and all the livestock according to their kinds, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut them in. The flood continued forty days on the earth. The waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. The waters prevailed above the mountains, covering them fifteen cubits deep, and all flesh dot died that moved on the earth. Birds, livestock, beasts, all swarming creatures that swarm on the earth and all mankind. Everything on the dry land in whose nostrils was the breath of life died. He blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground. Man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens. They were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left and those who were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed on the earth 150 days. So... In chapter 7, we get to see an example of God's wrath. We get to see that in the previous chapter, God was very dismayed with what he had created. He was very upset with mankind and how evil their hearts were. And he found favor upon Noah, who was righteous and walked with God. And he allowed him... Not only mercy to not have to die in this flood, but also a purpose. A purpose of saving two of every animal, saving his family and his, like, family's wives. You know, like, all those sort of things. He let Noah have this divine purpose of saving life on the planet. And... We get to see just how, you get to see just the depths of God's wrath. It says here, uh, let me just find it real quick. Verse 11, in the 600 year, 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth. And the windows of hev of the heavens were opened. So, I read that as like, alright, this is just God just letting it all just fall upon the earth. It is fully in his control that this were to happen. And he did this to wipe away all of the 
of the sinfulness of humanity to wash away the evil that existed in that time. And he blotted out everything that had life in it except for what was in the ark. So this is, I believe, a reminder to us as Christians to remember to fear God's wrath. I said this in yesterday's video too, right? This is a reminder to fear God's wrath. We must not lead ourselves astray and lead ourselves into this. We must not let ourselves get on God's bad side, like easily put. And we see how if we are on God's good side, if we are walking with God, if we are righteous, we will be given this divine purpose. We will not only be spared from God's wrath, but he will give us a purpose. He will give us a mission to accomplish while everything else is experiencing God's wrath. Now, we haven't gotten to Revelations yet, and I'm sure once we get there, I'll probably be looping back around to Genesis just to like see... You know, what sort of connections are there from the beginning and the end, right? And I feel like by the time we get to Revelations, we're really going to be talking a lot about the wrath of God. Because Revelations does have a lot of that, right? And I'm sure we'll be able to loop back around and see how the righteous in those times of God's wrath will be given a mission, a mission that they must achieve. But again, that's all like speculation. Like I, I would like to just very quickly say I am a new Christian. I'm just sort of giving my thoughts, reading through the Bible. So don't take anything I say as like, oh, this is some divine wisdom. It's, it really isn't. I'm just, the divine wisdom's here and everything coming out of my mouth is just a sinner trying to make sense of it. Alright? So, just want to get that quickly out of the way. But, we see God's mercy and God's wrath here in this chapter. His mercy to Noah and his wrath upon the rest of life. So that's everything I have to say today. Keep running when no one else is and have a blessed day.